having decided you've got a problem, that there is a problem that's actually causing issues for your users, you then need to identify the SQL behind that block of code. And we'll see how to do that in our next chapter. But before tuning the SQL, you need to understand how Oracle actually executes SQL. Now, Oracle is a client server database. We have a server process, the database server processes, and then we have the user processes, SQL Plus, Forms, um, an Apex application, something you've written in Java. You've got a user process that interacts with the end user. The user process generates SQL, server process executes SQL. If I take a very simple example from my database here, if I log on to the database, my user process is in this case SQL Plus. The server process is a database running on this machine. So if I execute SQL, select star from emp, there we go. What happened? User process generates the SQL, sends it to the server for execution. That's your client server split. User process generates SQL, server process executes SQL. How does the server process execute that SQL? In general, there are four steps. But some of these steps may not occur, depending on the nature of the code. Some of the steps may be iterated. The order of the four steps may change. But as a general rule, these are the four steps in this order. Beginning with parse, Oracle has to work out what the statement means. What is emp? What are the columns? Oracle has to work out what the statement means. Then there's bind. If the statement includes bind variables, they have to be expanded. Then there's execute, primarily for DML, working in the buffer cache of the database instance, and the fetch phase, working mostly in PGA, session memory. If this were a live class, I'll be asking you straight away, tell me what buffer cache is, tell me what PGA is. So parse, bind, execute, fetch. Let's look at them in a bit more detail.